Hi, this is Mark Weitzman, and this is the first of several videos I'm going to make on partial differential equations. And we're going to start with the separation of variables technique. And I'm going to uh, apply this to a few problems from Matthews of Walker. They have a very good chapter 8 on partial differential equations. And um, the theory as well as practical applications. And I hope to solve four or five problems from the book. And the types of equations that we're going to be treating are we're going to start with Laplace's equation. Which is very important in electrostatics and uh, it's a standard equation of mathematical physics and it's called del squared psi equals zero. And the operator del squared psi, sometimes written with the del right side up, is the second partial of psi with respect to x plus the second partial of y with respect to z plus the second partial of psi with respect to z. This is in rectangular coordinates. And oftentimes, due to symmetry considerations, we'll work in spherical coordinates where variables are r, theta, phi. Theta is polar, p is azimuthal variable. It's the opposite convention that mathematicians use. And here, del squared will be 1 over r squared, the partial of r of r squared. I'll put it back to size in the partial psi with respect to r. Plus 1 over r squared, 1 over sine theta, the partial of theta, sine theta, the partial of psi with respect to theta. Plus 1 over sine squared theta, the second partial of psi with respect to phi. And this part in curly brackets is proportional to the angular momentum. So those of you who have had quantum mechanics, those of you who have worked in electromagnetism will be very familiar with this as part of it. And we'll end up getting to the... Um, spherical harmonics and Legendre's equation and the um, polynomials. So we're not going to actually go through the whole solution of them. I'll leave that to your physics classes, but we'll use the solutions. And then in cylindrical coordinates using rho, theta, and z, del squared is 1 over rho, the partial with respect to rho of rho, the partial of psi with respect to rho, plus 1 over rho squared, the second partial of psi with respect to theta, plus the second partial of psi with respect to z. Okay, now the second type of equation that we want to look at is the wave equation. And this is going to be del squared psi minus 1 over c squared, the second partial of psi with respect to time. And C here is the constant, it's the uh, velocity of light in the case of electromagnetism. In the case of other waves, it's just the velocity of the wave. Third type of equation we'll look at is the diffusion equation. And here we'll write the diffusion equation as del squared psi minus 1 over kappa, the partial of psi with respect to time, equals 0. As you can see, the spatial part of it is the same, but the time part is only first order, and that makes all the difference in the world. Um, then finally, uh, another type of diffusion equation, which will do one problem, is, is the uh, famous Schrodinger equation of non-relativistic quantum mechanics this is the uh, time dependent Schrodinger equation V is the potential in the most general situation it's a function of space and time usually we work with um, time independent potentials and the equation would then simplify we would separate out the uh, time part I left out the psi so 
So here what we did was we substituted psi as proportional to e to the minus i et over h bar. Um, so all these equations, they have nice properties. They're linear, second order. Almost all equations in physics are linear. Einstein's relativity equation is an exception. Navier-Stokes, another exception. Second order, almost all equations in physics are second order. I guess the beam equation is fourth order. That's an, an outlier. And then there, we've written them down as homogeneous. We don't have any source terms here. If, and um, at some point in time, I'll get to Green's functions and we'll treat source terms. Right now, we're only doing separation of variables. There are other more powerful techniques, transform methods, wiener hopf methods and Green's functions. And um, so these are the type, linear second order homogeneous. Usually they separate into three types. I won't go into the whole theory of this. You can look in chapter 8 of Matthews and Walker and get more detail. But we call them, you might see these terms every now and then, hyperbolic. The wave equation would be hyperbolic. And then this parabolic. And uh, the diffusion would be an example of that. The Schrodinger equation is sort of a diffusion equation, but it's got imaginary constants, and that makes it a little bit different. And then we have elliptic equations, which is like the Laplace equation. is an elliptic equation. And the main thing about these equations are the type of boundary conditions. And so for hyperbolic, we, we tend to have open boundary conditions, meaning like the whole line. And for parabolic, also open. But for elliptic, we tend to have closed. So a classic situation in an elliptic might be something like you have a sphere and a, another sphere inside of it. And the potential on this sphere is, let's say, uh, V equal A. And on this sphere, it's V equal B. And what is the potential in between? So, so you have like a closed boundary, and you're determining um, starting to solve the problem for those conditions. And then when you specify them, for instance, like on a hyperbolic, you use what's known as um, Cauchy conditions. I won't. I won't even go into the. And on these two, we have what are called Dirichlet and Newman conditions. So sometimes we specify the values of the function on the boundary. I wrote v equal here. v would be like the psi. But sometimes we specify the derivatives. We might say the partial of psi with respect to r equals 0, you know, and so on. So the Newman, we specify derivatives. Dirichlet, we specify the values. Um, so that's the general outline of what we're going to do. And I want to start now with just uh, an example of a separation. And we'll start, because we'll use this several times, we'll start with the wave equation. We'll separate this in... Um, spherical coordinates. Now usually when we separate equations, we use what's called a product function. That's our, we try and separate psi into two product functions. And I'm going to use a capital letter to sort of say what the type of function is. This way you'll always know that x is a spatial function and the variables will be in small letters. So again, this is a time function of the time variable t. Now we don't always, this is usually what we do. There are exceptions. Sometimes we have like in um, Hamilton-Jacobi theory. In mechanics, we use something like s is equal to w of x minus et. 
But this is, um, well, this is a very important example. Usually we're working with product functions. And the idea with the product functions is these are like eigenfunctions. Once we find a solution, we're going to find that we have many of these, and then we're going to sum it. We're going to end up using something like psi is equal to the sum over k of ck, where that's a constant, times x of k, x, t of k, t. So it's sort of like a Fourier series. Each one of these products will satisfy this equation. So because it's linear, the sum will satisfy it. And then we'll use, we'll try and solve the boundary conditions using and find the C's that sol solve the boundary condition. Now, all of separation of variables with the product type of function uses the same trick. First, we substitute this into this equation. Now, what happens when we substitute in? Del squared is a spatial operator and doesn't act on the time part of the function. So we're going to get t of t times del squared, capital X of small x. And then on the other part, this is a partial derivative with respect to time. x has no time dependence, so we're going to get x of x times an ordinary derivative, second ordinary derivative. And now, at first you look at this, you might say you haven't made any progress, but here's the great idea. Now you divide this whole equation by psi. Not the whole psi, just this small attempt Look what happens. The t cancels that, and the x cancels that. So we end up getting del squared capital X of small of variable x divided by x. I'm going to put the minus sign on the other side of the equation is equal to second derivative of the time function now this equation is very interesting the left hand side only depends on spatial variables and the right hand side only depends on time variables the only way a function of x can be equal to a function of t for all x and t is for it to be both of them to be equal to a constant. So we end up getting, we end up equating this to what's called the separation constant. I'm just going to use here, call it minus k squared. This is just the reason why it works out better, but that's called the separation constant. And so now we end up with two equations. One is a partial differential equation. Involving only spatial coordinates. And the other is an ordinary differential equation. I'm going to use a variable omega omega is equal to kc. So it might not seem that we've made much progress. We started out with one partial differential equation, which are a lot harder to solve than ordinary. And we now have two equations. One is a partial differential equation, but it's only in three variables now, not four. The other is an ordinary in one variable. Now this one we can solve immediately and we'll do that in the next video. And this one we'll also do in the next video. We got three variables now. We're going to use the same technique we did here. Now we're going to use functions of space and we're going to separate them that way. So I'll see you back in the next video. Thank you very much.